citizenship for no no for, this for. was um, after the bust in England before applying to visit the United States I see that it would be a cool idea that's sort of you know it, it would be a cool idea what is this. your status in the country right now that's why Leon's here what what am I Leon well John was charged with being deportable in the United States for being an overstay by a very interesting um, uh, turn of events. The district director of the New York Immigration Service charged uh, uh, him with being an overstay after he gave him a two-week extension of his time. And in the middle of that two-week period, he, he was here on visa, it. right? And he yes. overstayed? Is that, is that he, the position? He had the... originally come in as a visitor, and he had had a number of extensions. And then finally, the Immigration Service gave him a two-week extension. And right in the midst of that two-week final extension, they revoked the period that they had given him, and they declared that he had been here as an overstay for the week that he had been here with their authorization. And mm -hmm. thus, the Immigration Service created the very status that they charged him with being deportable for. We fought that deportation case, and a decision was finally rendered after about a year that he was, in fact, an overstay. Now, the essential problem in a deportation case and what lies beneath the surface is that the only way one can get out of it is either to ask permission to leave this country voluntarily and get out, which John was not prepared to do, or to apply for permanent resident status. And the law prescribes that any person who had ever been convicted of any offense, no matter how small, relating to the possession of marijuana at any time in his lifetime and under any circumstances cannot obtain residence. And so that what was happening when the government did this little routine of revoking his stay and charging him with being an overstay, they were putting him, locking him actually into a position where the only application he could make was one which they were pretty sure he could never succeed in. Which was? For, pardon? The application that he would make would be one that he for would never permanent succeed residence. in. Permanent residence. Yes. All right. Now, we applied for permanent residence for John and for Yoko. We won Yoko's case, and she was granted residence, but John's case was denied. We went up on appeal before the Board of Immigration Appeals, and we lost there as well. And we are now before the United States Circuit Court of Appeals on the same issue. And basically, on that case, the issue resolves itself into whether or not what happened in England amounts to possession under our law, and whether what he possessed in England was actually marijuana under our law. You see, the substance which John was convicted of possessing, he pleaded guilty, was called cannabis resin. That's a generic term, and it includes a number of substances. We had one of our, the top experts in the United States, a psychiatrist at uh, Harvard Medical School, testify, and he, was the, he gave the only expert testimony. And his testimony was that cannabis resin is not marijuana, and marijuana is not cannabis resin. Yet the Immigration Service came to the conclusion that it was marijuana. And finally, with respect to the possession aspect, our law in the United States is very clear with respect to possession. You cannot be convicted in this country for possessing an illicit substance unless it is clear that you had a knowledge as to the illicit nature of the substance that you had. Mm -hmm. In England, at the time of John's conviction, a law existed which had been uniformly criticized throughout the world and which was later repealed. And it provided that the government did not have to prove that you knew the nature of the substance whatsoever. So that if you possessed a bottle and you thought it had aspirin in it, and in fact if the aspirin turned out to be some serious drug, you must have pleaded guilty under those circumstances because there was no way uh, out. And that actually was the legal situation that forced John into this, and that's where we stand with respect to the immigration. Yeah. I know that this is not a set, excuse me. Yeah, I was just going to say one interesting point was that when they started the initial case, they claimed that it was a local <coughs> New York problem, 
and they also started the proceedings against John and Yoko. Well, halfway or a third of the way through the proceedings or whatever the number is, they discovered that actually Yoko did not have any record in England and also she had a green card by a previous American husband. So this local case that was just another case like any other alien, which is what they kept claiming, was not one of those cases. So then they suddenly had to find something else, which was this overstay business, which they pulled a, a fast one. And so they had to give Yoko the green card. And they now one of them, I think his name is Green, keeps writing to the papers saying, they're still treating me like a normal citizen, a normal alien. Right, only on overstay, not, no longer mentioning about marijuana and the original normal reason I was being thrown out. And it's just interesting that the case keeps changing to suit them, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question about that in a second. We'll continue after these final announcements from our affiliated stations. Whatever gets you through the night. I know that this is not a satisfactory question, but maybe you have a satisfactory answer for it. You know, when, uh, when all of us were little, we were told uh, why try to be someplace where they tell you that you're not wanted? You know, if you go over at a friend's house and his mother says, hey, I don't want you around, you, you come home. You could live almost anywhere you wanted to in this world. Yeah. And so if you're getting hassled this way, and this does not in any way negate the incorrectness of the hassle, if yeah. it is, as your attorney states, why put up with it? Because I'd like to live in the land of the free, Tom. And also, if it was up to Joe dough on the street. He either doesn't care about it or would be glad to have an old beetle living here, you know? <laughs> you know, if I get in a cab uh, uh, with a cab driver, there's nothing to do with music or anything. He'll ask me, how are you doing? I hope you can stay. So in, on your average citizen either doesn't care or wouldn't mind me staying here. I like to be here because this is where the music came from, this is what influenced my whole life and got me where I am today, as it were. And I, I love the place, I'd like to be here, I've got a lot of friends here, mm -hmm. and uh, this is where I want to be, you know, Statue of Liberty, welcome. I even brought my own cash. Brooklyn Bridge, want to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're the ones that buy our bridges. <laughs> I should say that this program is being videotaped, what, uh, this is on the air, the 28th of April, so it's about 20 days ahead of schedule yeah. as we sit in the studio now. And there could very well be developments, I, I suppose, I'm just guessing here, between now and air. We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you the following NBC News special report. Here from the White House is NBC News correspondent John Cochran. Washington officials say the final evacuation of Americans from South Vietnam has been ordered. The White House has declined comment, but unofficial, although reliable reports say U.S. helicopters will ferry Americans to Navy ships off the South Vietnamese coast. Washington officials had hoped that big American transport planes could play a major role in the evacuation, but that appears unlikely at this hour because of confusion and crowded conditions on the runways at Saigon's Tansonut Airport. There does not appear to be enough room for the big planes to land, so helicopters are being used. Washington officials hope the evacuation of remaining Americans, about 900 in all, can be completed by dawn Washington time. But that is not at all certain. There are several problems, including hostile enemy fire in the area of the airport and difficulties in getting some Americans to the airport. Here at the White House, Secretary of State Kissinger is still working in his office following reports from South Vietnam. And just before midnight, President Ford got a briefing in the Situation Room here. He and Secretary Kissinger are hoping for good news by daylight.